we are here today in Denver. We're actually at the Inventing Room dessert shop. This is actually like inspired by the Willy Wonka film uh, back in the 70s. And this is kind of like, it's the future of dessert holiday series, which is really neat because we actually get to see some really amazing kind of science and dessert together. Yeah, and I've always wanted to visit Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. This could be my chance. The other thing I really like about it is all the theming that goes along with it. I mean, it's just the kind of the steampunk and just the inventing science wild side to it. And then look, Gene Wilder right there, which is really cool, awesome portrait. It is chocolate and science mixed together. This is awesome. Look at that old timey chemistry set. This is really well themed. You have these old timey storeroom seats that you can sit out. Ultra modern liquid nitrogen. And check out all these Edison bulbs over here. Look at the yummy menu too. So you got the goodies, unicorn pop rocks, the olipop, yeah, edible the wallpaper, wallpaper, cotton yeah. candy, marshmallow slice. Huh. And no melt ice cream. Ooh, no melt ice cream. Yes, Yum. Copper candy art. That's pretty cool sounding too. Oh, look at this, guys. Look at that. Look at the ball. Do you see it? Oh my goodness. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. And then it just gets sucked back up through the pipe there. Definitely excited to show you guys more. Can't wait to taste everything, share that with you. The menu looks amazing. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, my name is Chef Ian, I'm the owner. I'll be doing your future dessert and now your nice demonstration today. Uh, so we're gonna be talking about some, a uh, little bit of movie trivia, some fun uh, technology and some other kind of crazy stuff and uh, try a bunch of stuff as well. Have you seen Willy Wonka in the Chopper Factory? So watching that a lot as a kid, I noticed in the room where Violet gets big and purple and where they make the everlasting Bob Stopper, they're in the inventing room. Uh, so I took that name from my business. We've been catering for 15 years. We've been in the shop for five years. And we're opening in Saudi Arabia in a couple weeks, which is kind of crazy. Wow. wow. It's a hell of a commute. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to be talking about some fun science first. This is one of my favorite movies, uh, Christmas Story, and one of the iconic scenes in it. Uh, so let's talk about the science behind licking a frozen pole. So as your tongue touches the flagpole, the moisture on your tongue is raw with heat. The temperature of the moisture drops. Water freezes inside ten tiny pores and surface irregularities on your tongue in the pole. You are stuck. So um, I had this happen to me. I was doing an event in the mountains and somebody went and picked some raspberries and they brought it to me and they said, what happens if you put this in liquid nitrogen? Um, I was pretty new to the game, so I said, I don't know, let's try it. Put it in liquid nitrogen, put the raspberry in my mouth, and it froze to my tongue. So what you want to do is you want to get that thing out of there as quickly as you can. So as I pulled it, about a quarter of my tongue came off. So, uh, if that ever happens to me again, I have to treat it just like a, putting your tongue in a, on a cold pole. So we just pour a little bit of warm water on it, and your tongue will, will release. So uh, that was a very important lesson that I learned that day. So we're going to be using a lot of liquid nitrogen today in our presentation. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, kind of the principles of it, but a metal pole begins to freeze at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, liquid nitrogen is minus 321 degrees Fahrenheit, and it'll instantly freeze any liquid, anything submerged in it. So we're going to demonstrate that real quick here. I'm going to pour some liquid nitrogen in my cup, put it in my bowl. So liquid nitrogen boils. It boils because it's so cold. It's on the other side of the spectrum. Uh, there are two liquids colder than liquid nitrogen. That's liquid hydrogen and liquid helium. Uh, it's used in a lot of different industries. I used to cook for a scientist who would put satellite parts in it to see if it would stay at the same temperatures as space. So let's take a look at liquid nitrogen. I'm going to pour a little bit on the ground here. It actually is going through three types of matter as we watch it. Um, it starts as a liquid. When it gets into that little uh, droplet, it's actually a solid, and then it goes from a solid to a gas. This is called sublimation, when a solid goes to a gas stage. First thing we're gonna try today is some pumpkin spice, salted caramel, liquid nitrogen popcorn. Say that fast three times. Uh, so pumpkin spice is a fad created by Starbucks in 2011, and now it is absolutely out of control. As you can see by the products we have up here, uh, Jello, uh, pumpkin spice hummus. We've even got spam pumpkin spice. Uh, somebody the other day told me we have toilet paper pumpkin spice. So we need to stop. Yeah, it's getting too much. So you know, I was talking about earlier that that raspberry burned into my stick into my tongue. It's because it had a lot of water in it. So whenever we have a structure uh, out of liquid nitrogen, it needs to have a lot of air. 
so popcorn has a lot of air. Another good item that we put in here are Cheetos. So Cheetos are mostly air as well. So they just trap the nitrogen gas. It's not gonna get released to it today till it hits something warm and that's you guys. This is pumpkin spice, salted caramel, liquid, nitrogen, popcorn. And, and it goes and it's so cold, look at it. Okay, I did this again. <laughs> okay, that is awesome fun. <laughs> First of all, it's delicious. I didn't know there was pumpkin spice Cheerios. Chocolate ball, it's really fun. <laughs> I found these kind of interesting candy cane facts. 72% uh, of people eat a candy cane straight. Uh, eat the straight end, the rest of us eat the curved end. I'm a curved end guy. Uh, largest candy cane in the world was made in Switzerland. It was 51 feet long. Uh, if you've ever pulled sugar before, it's really, really hard. And to get it to 51 feet is, uh, is pretty amazing. And December 26th is National Candy Cane Day. I think they missed the boat on that. Yeah, right. it did. Should have been the 25th, maybe. We're gonna do some candy cane space foam now. Uh, in my uh, my uh, meringue bottle here, I've got uh, whipped cream, agar, simple syrup, peppermint, and a little bit of food coloring. Uh, in my little tray here, I've got some candy canes that have been ground up. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make little balls and put it in this candy cane. So essentially, we're poaching. Uh, this could be a bowl of hot water and we could be poaching eggs or fish, but we're just doing it on the other side of the spectrum. Here we go. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. Oh. <laughs> right, get Morgan. All right. It's super cold. Mm. Super good, but super cold. It is, it is really, really good. So, anyways, they also got a little container that and they I give you to put stuff cane, into. So. Oh my gosh, it was so delicious. It was like perfectly, the perfect right amount of candy cane. And, mm, mm -hmm. So good. So now we're gonna talk about a little bit more science in our uh, cooking applications here. This is a piece of equipment we have. It's a freeze dryer. It's, it's at our other kitchen. Um, it's about the size of a refrigerator. It has uh, four sheet trays that fit into it. Um, we can put raw or cooked foods in the freeze dryer and they're frozen between minus 30 and minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Once frozen, the freeze dryer creates a vacuum in the food chamber. As the food is gradually warm, the water turns to vapor and evaporates out of the food. So again, this is sublimation when we're going from a solid to a liquid. Um, so I can put a chicken breast in there, freeze dry it, take it out, put it in a mylar bag, uh, seal it up, put it on the shelf, and it's good for 25 years. Wow. Okay. Can I do the 25 year old chicken breast? No. <laughs> Zombie apocalypse, maybe? I'll give it a whirl. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like to put candy in my freeze dryer. I'm being Willy Wonka inspired, so I've got some different kind of candy textures. Uh, can you guys guess what this was before it was freeze dried? It's a very famous candy. Jolly Rancher? Jolly Rancher. Mm. Jolly Rancher. Mm. These are Jolly Ranchers. Wow. So they lose their, a little bit of the moisture and they puff up. We've done some fun fruit, like dragon fruit. Oh, yeah. Starburst is really good, but my favorite are Skittles. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's yeah. fun. So Skittles are the second most popular chewing candy behind Starburst. Uh, varieties include tropical, wild berry, uh, des dessert, sweet heat, smoothie, and sour. Has anybody got sweet heat? I've never met anybody that's out of them. In 2013, Skittles replaced lime flavored Skittles with green apple, causing a worldwide backlash of green apple. Uh, people were sending their bags back into the company demanding them to change out the flavor, which is pretty funny. Uh, no one knows who the inventor is. And this is a picture of a gumball machine in my living room. Um, I'm so addicted to these Skittles, I only get myself two quarters a day. <laughs> so I gotta ration myself, they're so good. So let's try some of these. You guys wanna come up with your cups? No, it's crunchy. Actually, it's crunchy. That's weird. Uh, he loves it, so what do you think? It tastes really good. The flavor is there. Yeah, man, I got him. I got the strawberry and the lime. Give it a roll. Cheers. No wonder he only gives himself a quarter, two quarters a day. I prefer this over the normal. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get stuck in your skin. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about are milk goods. So in 1928, Hoffman and company set out to make a perfectly round chocolate-covered caramel. Because it was impossible to make the candy round, they called them duds. 
So they made them and they were round and then they put them on the counter and as they dried and cooled, they fell down into this shape. Um, so I like to put them in the freeze dryer and we get this really amazing texture. Uh, caramel boils in a vacuum. So as the moisture releases, we get uh, some fun stuff. So come on up, let's try milk milk now. All right, this is for my dad. My dad loved milk duds at the movie theater when we were kids, so let's give it a whirl. Oh my gosh. It's like the consistency of like a pork rind. But it tastes way better. But it tastes like a milk dud. It's mm, so amazing. It's really, really super good. Wow, it's really good. All right, the next thing we're gonna try, try is something called compression. This is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, if I put different liquids in the bag uh, with different items, we can instantly marinate them. So today we've done compressed apple pie and we're gonna do it with some brown butter bits. So these are apples that have been compressed with our salted butterscotch. Uh, we leave these in here for three days and it gets this really awesome texture. We top this with uh, brown butter bits, which is bran cracker that's been cooked in brown butter. We have a few gluten-free people. These are gluten-free up here for you guys. So that one's gluten-free? Yeah, no graham crackers in this one. Okay. Oh wow. So when I used to work fine dining, I would put watermelon in a bag with soy sauce and fish sauce. And I can trick people into thinking it was tuna. So we can do some really fun stuff with this. Alright, the next thing we're going to talk about is presentation. So uh, we're kind of in a strange time right now with global warming and some other crazy stuff happening. Uh, so in the future, we might not have as many products to, to work. Chef might, might not have as much produce and proteins to work with. So I still need to come up with a great presentation to come, so you guys come to my restaurant, right? We demonstrate this in a black light room, and in just a second, we're gonna try some glow in the dark kind of candy. Oh. Uh, what this is gonna show you guys is I've created this experience with green ingredients. Uh, sugar, raspberry powder, and glow in the dark powder. So in the future, if we do have less ingredients, this might be a presentation you see more of. Uh, you guys are gonna go in there in groups, and you guys are gonna come out here, and I'm gonna make you guys Sundays. So let's look at our Sunday menu, so you can decide what you want. Today we have the Santa Sunday, uh, vanilla custard roll, rolled in gingerbread crumbs with whipped marshmallow and freeze-dried cranberries. <laughs> the whole ho ho cream puff is uh, vanilla custard, double chocolate, honeycomb crumbs, and exploding whipped cream. And the Mexican fried ice cream, that's rolled in fried tortilla and sugar with salted butterscotch, double chocolate sauce, cinnamon whipped cream, and a rice paper scroll. We make all of our own ice creams in-house here, so I'm going to go ahead and make our ice cream for you guys. So in my bowl here, I've got a milk, sugar, cream, and eggs. This is a liquid right now. I'm gonna pour my liquid nitrogen on here. So one crazy fact about our store here is uh, we don't have a freezer. So we have to make all of our ice cream to order. I'm actually the leading consumer of food grade liquid nitrogen in the state of Colorado. I go through more than anyone else. How fun was that? That was so cool that they did all of that right in front of us. We are in the glow in the dark room, guys. Look at this. A crazy raspberry glow in the dark cotton candy. Wow. What's really fun about this is you guys can take the powder off, put it on your nose, your forehead, get next to the black light, take a fun picture with it. This little girl used it as a makeup brush earlier today, so I'm gonna give that to you. So this is all edible. <laughs> what do you got? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, you got it all over you. Uh, See how cool I can be. Black light. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, now eat some. <laughs> so here's my sundae. And I've got ice cream, caramel chocolate, freeze dried cranberries, and exploding whipped cream. I don't know what that's like. We're gonna give this a whirl. Let's get a little bite. The cream didn't explode. It's all really good though. And this is the ho-ho cream puff with chocolate, yum, and ice cream made from liquid nitrogen. What's your fried ice cream taking like, tasting like? So it tastes like tortilla and then the cinnamon. It tastes like a churro just around the ice cream and then you have like the caramel and the chocolate and then the normal whipped cream. It's really good. We had an amazing time guys. This was yeah, absolutely was so mind fun. blowing with the science and it tasted amazing. So not only do you get the best dessert flavors, 
but you also get an amazing experience and the science behind it is super fun. And you can check it out at trdenver.com or if you're in Dubai, they're opening up a location there. You can buy the candy online, guys. And we're gonna leave a link in the description, so go check them out. You can order their fun stuff all over the world. So go check it out. If you're here, check it out. This was awesome. If you guys will, give this video a big thumbs up and share it. Let's go ahead and ding that notification bell. That way you're gonna know every time we go live or we put up a video. And until next time, get out there, have some fun, and, and we'll, we'll see, see you on, on the flip, flip side. side.